Hey marketers, this is the Girls in Marketing podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We are so excited to get started with the episode. Just before we do, we want to give you a little introduction to who we are and what we do. Girls in Marketing is an e-learning platform and online community. We are on a mission to bridge the digital skills gap and equalize gender seniority in marketing. Right, that's enough chat. Let's get into the episode. Hello and welcome back to the Girls in Marketing podcast. I am very excited today because we are joined by none other than Nathan Bickerton. Nathan is a full stack creative marketer currently working at Rise at Seven. He has also previously interned with Stephen Bartlett. He has so many amazing ideas and he is very creatively minded. So today we're going to dive into thinking outside of the box, coming up with creative campaigns and lots of other exciting things. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming today, Nathan. Nathan is a fellow Liverpoolian, well, Scouser, whatever we kind of say. Um, So thank you so much for coming today, coming back to your hometown. Thank you for having me. Um, If my girlfriend hears this, she'll call me a wall, but we do. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to start by talking about your journey of how you got to where you are right now. Um, Your journey actually started with Stephen Bartlett um, and you created him a Wikipedia page. So people might be familiar with this, they also might not be. Um, Do you want to kind of explain how this all came about and the kind of story behind the Wikipedia page and your opportunity with Stephen Bartlett? Yeah, sure. It was was a little bit mad, to be honest. I was... Did my, well, I'd finished my undergrad in uh, public relations and I'd got a first in it. And unfortunately at the time, no agency wanted to hire me because I didn't have any experience. So I dived straight into a master's because it was during COVID as well. So I just thought, stay in education. Mm-hmm. Um, so alongside my master's, I was working at a, well, I was working at a call center for NHS Track and Trace. Um, but then they just decided one day that we were all going to get it made redundant. So it was like, great, brilliant news. Um, so we had to take that one on the chin. It was about four or five days notice. So, uh, I mean, obviously I anticipated the redundancy for about a week, but then when it actually happened, it was like a Monday. I don't even remember the day it was. Um, but I just back to the drawing board then. So uh, I was doing my master's. I didn't have a job and I needed one. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm not going back to any more call centers now because I'd worked in, uh, worked in a call center previously for about a year and a half. So I had about two years in a call center while studying. And I thought, right, now's the time to try and make a jump. So uh, during my redundancy, I spent the first like three days applying for graduate jobs. And as you'll probably know, if you did it yourself, like mm-hmm. it's tedious and very, very unrewarding. Like you yeah. go through it's so lengthy application processes. You know, you put your CV in and then you have to copy and paste your CV in and again. And um, then they don't even get back to you. So I did that for about three days and I got one lead. I got free to like an application center or test center for mm-hmm. one of them. Um, but that was like, after three days, it was like, oh, this is so long. <laughs> and I, I was like, I was just Googling, Googling around for inspiration. You know, when you get bored of doing a task and you just start playing around with the internet. And uh, something led me to Google Steve's name because I'd heard about him and followed him on LinkedIn for a long time because I lecture with those to follow him. So... I put his name into Google and uh, it just shocked me that like there, there was no Wikipedia page for him at the time. Like Steve was, is, is famous, very, mm-hmm. very, very famous and deserves a Wikipedia page. So I looked at him and I was like, why is this not there? So I went on Wikipedia, checked it and there actually wasn't a page. There, there tried to be one created for him before, but it wasn't there. And I was like, okay, this is something I can do. But I shelved the idea for the night because I thought this is going to take me a few hours and those few hours could get me a job. Mm-hmm. So I basically slept on the idea. And then I woke up the morning after at like seven in the morning and um, I was just like, right, I need to apply for jobs today. But my head was like, write the Wikipedia page. So I ended up writing the Wikipedia page because I sh- just took the risk. Uh, it took me about four, four hours to do and then I basically had it and I, and I went to mum was like, mum, I've done this and I think it might do well because it's about Stephen Bartlett and everything about him it does really well. Like he's popping off, he had his book coming up and everything like that. And I was like, I think I might post it on LinkedIn and try and get some like content for my personal brand because I was building mm-hmm. it at that time anyway. Um, but mum was like, don't do that because he might not want you to post it on LinkedIn. She was like, drop him a DM, like message him. And I was like, okay, you probably won't reply though, but okay. Um, so I shot him a message on Twitter 
I don't know why I didn't use LinkedIn, but I shot him a message on Twitter. I had about 20 followers. He had about 100,000. <laughs> um, and I was just like, hi, Steve, I brought you this page. You know, you've got your book launch coming up. It's a link for you, going to be on Google, like it's brilliant SEO, everything like that. And I didn't expect anything of it. And then like 15 minutes later, he replied and he was like, this is dope. Like, yeah. when did you do this? And I was like, I did it this morning. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I did this morning. And he's like, why? why? And I was like, I got made redundant. I needed some content for LinkedIn. Like, I saw you didn't have a Wikipedia page. You know, I just thought I'd help out. And he's like, do you want to come work with me in London? And at that point, my top came off. I was banging on my chest. Like, I called my mom, like, mom, I've got a job. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was ridiculous. It was it was so cool. It was, yeah. uh, I mean, I can see the smile now. Like, thinking yeah. back to it, it was such a, it was such a ridiculous high when it all happened. And, mm-hmm. You know, that since then, like Steve, well, shortly after that, Steve posted it on LinkedIn and then that went viral. Mm-hmm. And then that, my LinkedIn exploded. It got banned off LinkedIn for having too many people coming at me. I was <laughs> like, it was a whirlwind. It was, it was, a, it was mad. <laughs> yeah. It's really crazy because the way you just say it, like so casually, like I decided to do a Wikipedia page because I didn't have one, but that's so creative. Like, I don't feel like I would have ever, like in a million years have thought, okay, I'm going to create this person like on Wikipedia page and it must have like you said took you quite a while to do it so definitely have to like know the ins and outs of his life to create their Wikipedia page um so after that happened you you know he said he offered you the internship which was amazing um and more as you said than you could have ever like dreamed of um how did how did it all play out then so what was kind of the process for you obviously you said your LinkedIn blew up which was amazing um what what kind of happened after that um well the internship you basically offered me was in April but I had free assignments during April so Mm. we said that we'd do it in May instead um so I pushed it back a month to get the university out of the way and then during that month like I probably should have gone straight away because it was like, it was such a mad time. Like I had magazines getting in contact, like Business Insiders spoke to me, um, like a few big magazines. I put them on my website to keep them in a place. But like, yeah, they like the press got involved. Like the journalist, the Daily Mail sent a photographer to my house. They didn't run the story, which is probably thankful for because I would have got bullied in the Daily Mail comments. Um, but yeah, like it was, it was crazy. It was proper hard to comprehend like everything that went on. Um, but then, you know, I did my university assignments, the month played out and then I basically got a flat in London and I moved down to London for the month to mm-hmm. work with Steve and his personal team mm-hmm. on like Steve's personal brand. And now when I went there, it was just during the whole Dragon's Den announcement thing. So it was, it was so busy. It was crazy. Yeah. It was probably one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my life. Cause it like, I've never seen things move so quickly Yeah, and, and it wasn't just about moving quickly. It was moving quickly at such like a high level, like these are big people like journalists from massive publications and you know interviews all over the place press everywhere it was like just stepping into the limelight for a bit and stepping mm-hmm. into the side of it and it was like it was it was really hard to manage for someone from like me who was literally working in a call center in Birkenhead to be then mm-hmm. working on Shoreditch High Street it was like crazy it's a very big jump and it was sick it's something that I'll never forget Yeah, it's really interesting because I think you are a prime example of like creating your own opportunity. You know, we did a podcast episode, it was a while ago now actually, uh, with one of the previous girls and marketing team, Lauren, and we did an episode, it was called Creating Your Own Opportunities. So if you are interested, go and check that out. Um, And essentially, we just talked a lot about the fact of sometimes as a, a young person who wants to get into, you know, marketing or the kind of digital space, a lot of the time, the opportunities won't necessarily come to you. You've got to go out and you've got to search for them. Um, and, you know, this this thing that you did in particular was like creating the Wikipedia page, super innovative, something completely different. And I think it's funny that you know, your mum said to, rather than post it on LinkedIn, like DM him, be like, that's such a parent thing to do. It's like, just, just DM him, just, just do that. Like, okay, he's going to reply to me. And then he actually did. So I think it's really funny that, you know, you, that kind of aspect of you doing that in general. I mean, if you hadn't of, we, you know, we wouldn't be sat here right now and you wouldn't have the opportunities that you have had, which is, which is crazy. I'm pretty sure that you would have figured out a way to do it anyway, because you are so creative, but it's just crazy how things play out. And you are a prime example of that, you know, creating your own opportunity, making sure you go out and you kind of, you do that. And that's something that I talk a lot to, you know, students and grads about is 
is doing that. And it can be hard if you aren't super creative to kind of think of those ideas and stuff. Um, and I think that, you know, it. I don't know if you've got any kind of advice for people that are kind of in that position right now that, you know, maybe want to get some experience or want to do some stuff. I don't know, you know, if you could give any advice to those people. Yeah, I guess so. Um, we're in a really good time at the moment where social media, you can speak to anyone. Like mm-hmm. you can, you have a line of connection to pretty much anyone in the world. So, you know, it's just a matter of reaching out. And I guess if you can do something that benefits the person that you want something from, then if you can scratch their back, they'll scratch yours. Mm-hmm. But finding opportunities like that, like, that whole Wikipedia thing was one in a million. Like, mm-hmm. that's so... I just... I still think it's lucky. Like, it doesn't happen. Like, it's basic. It wasn't anything super special. Like, it was... a mat- Like, it was just lucky. So you just got to kind of just be always on the lookout for mm-hmm. opportunities like that. And, like, say, for instance... I don't know. Say, for instance, you want to get into a company. Well, do, if you do some research on that company, you might be able to spot a gap. Like, research most definitely is important. Like, I guess I was researching inspiration when I found the gap with Steve and mm-hmm. if I wasn't like googling around for inspiration then I wouldn't have got it so like if you say if you want to get in a well, I'm going all over the place with this but say you want to get into a company look at them look at what they do look at the clients and then you might find okay this is the client I like and I know something about okay you could mock up a campaign for them mm-hmm. like even if it's just a print ad or even if it's just like create something mm-hmm. there's so many ways outside of the traditional hiring process that you can um get noticed now yeah particularly with social media that it's anyone's game it's all out there you've just got to chase it and you've got to just be enthusiastic and it will come eventually I guess you just got to not give up as well because this thing with Steve wasn't the first thing that I tried to do to get attention like I reached out to so many people and I tried to linger in so many people's DMs and it to be honest they didn't work out mm-hmm. but then you know one day I got lucky and damn I mean I've never yeah. looked back yeah that's really it's really nice to hear actually that it you know it wasn't the first person that you messaged because maybe I mean you are saying it's luck but also it seems like quite sheer hard work as well you know getting that constant knock knock back not even a ne- necessarily a knock back but the kind of ghosting of other people it can really kind of put a downer on people and you know there might be people listening now or people who've been in that position before where actually you know they they're doing these things putting themselves out there creating their own opportunity and it's not going you know the way it should so really nice advice to kind of carry on and and keep you know pushing on to to the next thing and like you said maybe one day and you never know when it is it'll be the thing that you know changes everything um so it's really kind of nice to to hear that so you are like a fab example of hard work you know get it really pay putting hard work in you know, you get the hard work out um, and you, you know, you've done a lot of amazing things more recently as well, um, as well as just the Stephen Bartlett stuff and you're now working at Rise of Seven, you know, you've done a lot of stuff more recently, personally, that is so crazy and amazing. Um, but going back to kind of like that whole, like getting these amazing opportunities. So you obviously did the internship, you were getting all these crazy opportunities. What was going through your mind when that was all happening? I was like, wow, this is a change. Um, <laughs> because obviously it had gone from a student where I was knocking on a lot of doors and getting no response. And then suddenly I was on the other side of the door and there was a lot of people knocking on my doors. But I already had the opportunity with Steven. So it was like, okay, it was a matter of like, do I need anything backing up? Like, do I always need a backup plan? Because you always need a contingency plan. Like, do I accept this because they're paying me so much? Or mm-hmm. do I accept this because they've got cool clients? Or do I accept this because it's close to home? There's a lot of factors and it was... Yeah, it was mad. It was it was it was tough because it's it's such a weird change. Mm-hmm. Like students, I mean, I don't know. I can speak for myself here, but I hope I can speak for a lot of other students when I say you don't get a lot of opportunity you just landed on your lap. Mm-hmm. And I was, and I was like, oh, I was yeah, so shocked by it. But I guess it's a steep learning curve, but you learn pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people who are like say in my position with a lot of people who are reaching out to me, offering me opportunities. But then they did want something in return on the flip side. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were trying to use me as a way to get to Steve. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to do that because Steve's got a lot of people probably trying to get to him already. Mm. So I had to be conscious of that from day one. And that's something, because if I was to go, like, for that opportunity with Steve, if I was to start going, 
oh, Steve, I've accepted this when they want to speak to you. Like, that's just an egg. Yeah. For lack of a better word. <laughs> so, yeah, I was conscious of that from day one. I guess it was, yeah, it was a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. No, it's really interesting, actually, that you, you know, you say that because something that I haven't acknowledged yet is that we've actually recorded this episode before um, because we recorded it when we were doing uh, virtual uh, recordings and then we ended up getting the studio and I was like, you know what? He's such a nice lad. We get on. Let's, you know, you're from the pool. Let's just come in, bring you into the studio um, and we'll record it in person. So since then, you've had some crazy other things going on. So we want to talk about like creative campaigns and stuff because evidently you are creative, super creative. You you know what you're doing. Um, do you have any kind of, I don't know if you'll even have this, but like a bit of a secret recipe or a kind of rules that you stick to when you're creating creative content. Like, do you have anything that you can kind of share in terms of in terms of that? Because I would say in general, I'm not super creative. Um, so it'd be good to learn from you. <laughs> oh, first off, no, I'd say you're very creative. Look what you've created. Like girls yeah. in marketing, marketing is phenomenal. So you, I'd, I'd say you're very, very creative. Um, as for me, I don't know, my head's always buzzing. I've got I've got something wrong with me. Like, <laughs> I was constantly thinking. So there's always there's ideas, like, constantly write them down. Again, like, research, research everything. Like, there's statistics out there, and you might see a statistic, like, one in four or something, and you can, like, visual, visualize that or spin that into a whole campaign. Mm -hmm. There's always some kind of knowledge out there, which, if you find it interesting, there's a lot of other people will find it interesting, like... I follow a lot of those fact pages, like, mm -hmm. do you remember, like, is it eight fact and stuff like that? Yeah. And there's always little quirky facts on there. I'm like, damn, you know, that could be a campaign. Mm -hmm. And it's not only just, like, knowledge, but, like, trends. So there's, like, stuff that's trending in the news. So, like, cost of living crisis, for mm -hmm. example. Like, that is everywhere at the minute. Like, I can't feel it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, for instance, take it the other, the, like, the other month, Kirsty Arsop made those ridiculous comments about cancelling your Netflix. Mm -hmm. and you know, cancel your Netflix and you can all buy a house. And that's evidently not true. So to prove a point on Twitter and to try and just be a little gobby Nathan who I am, <laughs> um, I decided to calculate how many years you'd have to abstain from Netflix to buy a house in each UK region. And then I thought, okay, I'll, I'll throw this on a map now. I did this on my day off because I make campaigns on my day off for a lot. <laughs> and I called it a shitty map because I thought it was a shitty map. And I posted it on Twitter and then it turned out it wasn't that shitty. Like yeah. a lot of people liked it and it got it got million million plus views on Twitter and same on LinkedIn. And then that opened the door to me get getting into Vice magazine, which is a magazine which I've read since a child. I love documentaries on YouTube. It's probably not appropriate for a child to read, but I read it. <laughs> yeah. And um yeah, that opened the door and then I ended up working with them, getting the article in there with the editor in chief Zing, and that was crazy. Like that was so cool. Mm -hmm. like, my name was in Vice and I was, when that came through and then when, when that published, I was like dead excited. And that all just came from like a, you know, just looking at a trend and mm -hmm. trying to think of all the places where ideas come from. Netflix. Yeah. There's loads of cool stuff on Netflix and that puts loads of trends. I guess that leads a lot of trends. So. Yeah, I think it, it's that. I mean, Thierry spoken about it previously on the podcast, like Google Trends is a really great one. Mm -hmm. Just like watching what brands are doing and what trends and kind of how that Re, like relates to each other because I mean there's so much going on all the time and you just creating that map and you know it, it's a bit of fun isn't it and it's just kind of like oh yeah I'll just do this and I remember actually seeing it because we follow each other on Twitter I don't know if you follow me actually but I definitely follow you <laughs> um, and I seen it and I was like oh this is so sick I showed me my friends and I was like oh like Nathan's like he knows you I was like Nathan's it made this map I was like it's so funny because we were all talking about it because the comment was you know so ridiculous um and it was so funny because I think at the time don't want to be like an OG but I'm pretty sure I've got 10 likes on it um and then all of a sudden um the next day like went into the office was speaking to Martha and she was like oh I've seen that you know map that, that Nathan made and I was like oh yeah it's funny isn't it just thinking it was like a little thing and she was like it had like a ridiculous amount of likes and I was like when I liked it it only had 10 likes but I think that's another example of putting yourself out there. And I think sometimes people get worried or kind of like a bit, they're a bit unsure of the things that they're doing. 
But what I like particularly about what you do is you just don't take it too seriously. And maybe that's something that people need to to think about themselves is when they're doing these things. If they are putting themselves out there, whether that's creating a Wikipedia page, whether that's, you know, creating a map or whatever people do, just don't take yourself too seriously because that is what you you know, personify in, in yourself is that actually you can make a bit of fun out of these things and then it turns into an article in Vice, it turns into an internship and, you know, that sort of thing. So it's really nice to, you know, know that that's kind of the notion behind what you do is is kind of not taking yourself too seriously, being super creative and, yeah, following with trends and stuff. Just have fun with it, haven't you, really? Like, you've mm-hmm. got to enjoy it. And you find when you do stuff that you enjoy, then you'll do it 10 times better and you'll have a lot more fun with it. Because I know myself, when I'm doing something that I don't like doing, then I'm very bad at actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. I've really struggled to do things that I don't like to do. And um, just circling back to the uh, the creative question, mm-hmm. I think you can get a lot from looking at what's already been done. I saw a statistic on Twitter the other day and it was like 60% of the internet is duplicate. And Mm -hmm. that was just talking about web pages from an SEO perspective. But it made me think like, on the base, like thinking about the concept of originality, what is original anymore? Because like what's original to one person, like say this might be the first time you've ever seen it, that's original. Mm -hmm. But that idea will have existed somewhere else in like Mm -hmm. a different angle. So you get a lot from seeing what's already been done. Like I wasn't the first person to make a map. Like I'm not, I'm not data, there's data web maps have been around probably longer than I have. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like just taking it and putting it in your own little cheeky spin. Mm-hmm. And that that's the best way to do it. Like looking, it's like, I guess it's a mindset. So when we were making TikTok for the Rise at 7 TikTok, mm-hmm. we were literally, I was just, we, was, we smashed it. We got like millions of views. We popped mm-hmm. off. We went, we went viral. And um, it would literally just come from like going down TikTok, looking at work TikToks and thinking, right, I like that. I like that sound. How can, how can we take that and make it our own? And like, I, I like that scenario. Does that happen in our work? No, but how can we make it similar? It's just, I guess it's like, there's a book by Austin. I don't know how to say his surname. It's like Cleone. It's mm-hmm. like Steal Like an Artist. Okay. And stealing is a very big way a lot of people do it nowadays everything's everything's been done before but if you can do it in your own different way then it's still original it's still yours Mm -hmm. yeah I think it's it's taking inspiration isn't it it's you know and and that is the way of the world at the end of the day we've this might be quite deep but we've existed for however many centuries and however long so you know you probably won't be the first person to do something but that isn't the point the point is that you have your own like uniqueness and you can add something else something a bit different and as you said with the you know the whole kind of map or as you called it the shitty map um that isn't original but it is in its own way because you did it for something that hadn't been done before um so I think it's just about taking inspiration in terms of like how you can actually work things and and stuff like that and to move in a little bit more into kind of you know uh, personal branding because I think that's something that you do a lot of did you have any intention of building a personal brand or was it just more of like a I don't know like just it just happened type of situation it did initially because I really wanted a job Mm -hmm. I really wanted to get a job in marketing and I was like my applications are falling on deaf ears I was struggling to get experience with no experience so I've got to do something um so yeah I guess it all started just to get a job and then I didn't anticipate it going bigger than what it was like I didn't anticipate Stephen getting involved and like being publicly validated and Mm -hmm. I mean when that yeah, I guess when that happened, it, it got a lot more serious and it was like, I've got to inject a bit more personality into this because originally I was literally taking my university lecture with content and turning it into like thought leadership posts with like mm-hmm. a knowledge angle. Yeah. And they're all still up there for people to see. And then when like I actually had a bit more of a, like a career that people wanted to know about, then I started talking about myself personally. But now I think the personal branding is a lot more favorable if you're, Perth, like bring it inject your personality into it more yeah there's a lot of people now like ellie middleton for example mm-hmm. and like, yeah so he, he's smashed it yeah like and they just come out through smashing it with the personality like they, they weren't spamming the knowledge-based content like i was and it seems to be doing a lot better so that's the mm-hmm. way it works nowadays and that's you know that's the way yeah it's- no it's it, you know i think personality is what 
it's that whole notion of people like buy from people and even though with personal branding you're not necessarily buying from them perhaps a lead or whatever but you know people aren't doing that people love just relating to other people and you know I think you mentioned Nellie Middleton she talks a lot about um, neurodiversity which is really cool and I think that people just love something that is authentic and like just relatable and they can read and they can enjoy it and it's not you know too much and I think something that happens a lot with personal branding is that because people talk about it a lot in the industry and it is it is big in marketing is that actually um people aren't they don't know where to start like people are kind of like as you said you were a student when you started right and it was interesting that you said actually you kind of created more like knowledge knowledge based posts because that might be a good place for people to start because I, I was thinking you know anyone listening now that wants to kind of build a personal brand but maybe they're junior or you know a student or something I don't know if we can kind of give them any advice um in terms of like getting started because you know being authentic is definitely one but I don't know I'm trying to think of like what what can be said? I don't know if you've got anything to kind of add. Yeah, I guess. Um, just, I mean, take university content like I did, that worked so kind of well. I mean, people were somewhat reluctant to listen to a student with no experience, but at the end of the day, it was content and it got mm-hmm. me writing. And once you're writing, you feel a lot more comfortable mm-hmm. when you'll start writing a lot more other things. So, like, say for instance, the news. I know I see a lot of personal brands who do this. Like, Don McGregor loves to do this. He um, mm-hmm. he'll take the new a news topic that day and he'll give his opinion on it yeah and that works really really well because obviously it's everyone will read it in the news and then they'll log on to linkedin and they'll see it and they'll see you talking about it and then like that kind of reactive style post works mm-hmm. um i guess yeah we're talking about yourself and is it ambivalent i think that's the right word mm-hmm. I've, seen, I've seen that's like very so talk about talk about tough topics that you wouldn't usually talk about just it doesn't have to be professional anymore does it mm-hmm. i mean the definition of profession like what is professional mm-hmm. I mean, it's changed I mean, the camera can see I've got my legs out I wear shorts (laughs) and like you know just inject your personality into it if you can I'm trying to think of other things like that you can talk about campaigns I do a lot of this Mm -hmm. I'll um I'll share a lot of like campaigns creative because I want to be known for creativity so I'll I'll go out my way to find creative work and like share it with other people like Mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of stuff now that you'll see this get rehashed over and over again like there's a billboard it's like Mm -hmm. we made this billboard for we just put all of our excellent customer service i don't know mm-hmm. but like because there's creative work like that like just talk about what you want to be talk mm-hmm. about what you want to do so i want to be creative i'll show creative work like yeah you're smashing girls in marketing you talk about girls in marketing yeah i guess that's the best way to do it because then you'll be more passionate about what you talk about because you like it yeah i think it's kind of that aspect of like i hate this saying as well but like fake it till you make it yeah. it's kind of like where do you want to be who do you want to be And what industry do you want to be in? And I think that, you know, anyone listening who's maybe in that position right now and trying to kind of get into the industry, a lot of it is just kind of like, you know, putting yourself forward as someone who not necessarily knows what they're doing because, you know, that's not what people are here for. People are here for the people who are learning. The people are always changing. Um, We had Chloe Wong on the podcast last episode that talked basically a lot about PPC and she's been in the industry for years and she still said I'm learning all the time and I think that that's the truth isn't it you know you can't just expect that okay I have even like 10 years of experience I know everything because you don't like it's always learning Um, and I think that's what you can kind of put across in personal branding as well so as you said you want to be known for your creativity which you definitely are Um, so you know talking about creative campaigns giving your take on it is always like a nice way to go I think that's really cool um and this is kind of getting a, a little bit deep, but you did kind of touch on this before. Um, so quite a while ago now, um, which wasn't actually when we first recorded this podcast, it was like the other day, but it was a while ago now. Um, you talked a lot about kind of like mental health struggles. And I think it's really important to mention because it is part of your story and you are, you know, 20 something year old lad. Like it's very hard to talk about mental health. Thierry in a, in another episode talked a lot about mental health and I think it's really important because it's not something that's spoken about quite a lot um but you know are you kind of happy to talk a little bit about 
you know, what you kind of experienced and, and talk a little bit about kind of mental health in general and like how you kind of gotten to where you are, but kind of kept yourself in a, in a good position. Yeah, sure. mm. let's, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, gosh, I mean, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got, we'll go way back then. So the post that you were talking about was when I, it was the weight loss one, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was that photo, the original photo was from when I first moved to uni. Now, before I moved to university, I was heavily into gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to lay this on the line. I'm an addict. Mm-hmm. Right? I just pick something up and I'm like, yes, this, me, 100% all mm-hmm. the time. And that's how it was with gaming. Uh, from school till about like 16, 17, when I sold all my gaming stuff, mm-hmm. I would come home from like college, school and just smash it for like eight hours a night. And then that obviously it ruined the social skills. Mm-hmm. Like I was just a shut in, like, mm-hmm. and I put on loads of weight and I wasn't happy. I wasn't doing what I wanted to be. And then when I moved to university, like that's when that photo was taken because that was from Freshers. Yeah. And then uh, when I moved to university, you know, I made a lot, I met a lot more people and like, I got back into the, world like I started going out a lot more and like I was just going to gym then like exercising and like just that itself like I felt a lot happier then because I was doing something that a I wanted to do b I was coming out of my shell that I'd wanted to do for mm-hmm. a long time but like in your hometown it's a lot harder to do than when you're when you're like in a completely different city yeah so that was like that was great and then obviously through the three years of university four years of university like I just became such a different person I grew and like that my mental health just was so much better mm-hmm. like this is why I'm so keen to live out and like continue moving around and like exploring because I feel like if I do go home then I'll fall back into the same old ways I probably mm-hmm. won't but it's just always there and like it's just there are triggers for it mm-hmm. um, and like you know fast forward four years now when we're in a work setting I mean at university mental health was perfect because I didn't have any really responsibility I had yeah. a part-time job and like <laughs> Like yeah I could go to my lectures if I wanted to mm-hmm. and like there was no responsibility but you know now mm-hmm. in the working world with like actual responsibility bills to pay mm-hmm. I guess it can it's a completely different battle and there's still been a learning curve you know mm-hmm. I mean for example when that whole Steve thing happened that was like that would grow up quick mm. because like I was gone from just being a student unemployed I was dossing around a lot and um, and then, then all of a sudden I had the press involved. And yeah. Had, like, an audience and I had like my, my career had started that I'd been working on for so long and I do remember crying when all that happened, which is mm-hmm. really, it's not cool to admit it, mm-hmm. I guess. I mean, I don't care, but for a boy, I mean, it's, it's meant to be hard, but yeah. yeah. I remember crying because it was a lot to take in and it was it was proper tough. I was just sat on the bathroom floor. I was like, oh my God, what's happened? <laughs> um, but then like, you just got to let out sometimes, haven't mm-hmm. you? And now, yeah. now I'm in a job like this. That was a different struggle because work can be demanding, especially mm. when you're in like a relatively new job and you want to you want to perform. Yeah, you want to, especially with myself. Like I set such high expectations for myself, and I think people have high expectations of me because of what I've done and what mm-hmm. I'm going for. So like I would have, like I'll just go and I'll smash it every day, and then like mm-hmm. if I'm underperforming, then I'll, I'll give myself a lot of like shit yeah we're our own worst enemy sometimes and i think you know you shouldn't definitely shouldn't be giving yourself shit so stop that please (laughs) um but i think you know we we have high expectations of ourselves and especially in a workplace setting it can be really difficult to kind of like live up to those expectations and sometimes you are the only person who's holding yourself accountable to those you know those expectations and actually the reality of it is, is that, you know, if, for example, you have, a, if, let's say this week for me, right? So, um, so I was talking to you before about my week and I made this massive to-do list at the start of the week. I was like, right, I'm going to smash it. So productive. And actually it's Friday. We're recording this on a Friday um evening and it's, honestly like I haven't done my to-do list and I, w- I was sat in upstairs earlier in in the office from where our studio is and I was thinking to myself why am I like kicking myself over this like you know at the end of the day like I haven't finished I've done quite a bit but I haven't done everything I wanted to do 
Um, and I think because I, you know, I always hold myself to high expectations. I'm like, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. Um, and yeah, I think sometimes we're, we're our own worst enemy. And actually, and I said this on Instagram stories before, you know, if you don't have a super productive week, that's okay. Sometimes that happens and that's, you know, totally okay. And I, I think it's really admirable that you talk about your mental health and you are open with it because, you know, especially men but everyone it's it's hard to talk about these things it's hard to talk about these things in the workplace it's hard to talk about these things in general publicly you know all 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 those types of things so definitely big big respect for that thank you (laughs) and as you said as you were saying before if you got to do this like it's it's easy to forget like how much impact external factors can play in your productivity Mm -hmm. so like say for instance you you know you've got a big to do list as you're saying and you know, you get a call from a client and then someone else needs to sort in, then that's going to throw your day off. And mm-hmm. you might have it all planned out in your head, like a perfect plan of, like, I'm going to nail this task by nine, this one by ten, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But then you could just get a sort of third party coming in and just, you mm-hmm. know, taking over. And it does throw you off, doesn't it? But you just need to, like, I guess, just not put yourself too accountable. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, a, I'm a pain for it, but I've been trying to get better at it recently. Like, mm-hmm. what, 5.30, that's it, the day ends there. Yeah. Like, you try and switch off you know like go home read a book exercise mm-hmm. have a pint yeah <laughs> i i've actually got a lot more into reading recently and i think that's a really good way to switch off because if i'm being completely honest i when i started girls and marketing as a business i just kind of assumed that i had to be uh like be a bit business owner be this like who reads like business books and stuff like that um, and actually, I didn't, don't like business books. And that's something I have to admit to myself is that I didn't like business books. Um, and actually, I just wanted to read like rom-com fictions and that's okay. And so now, like when I'm not working and I'm relaxing, I will read rom-com fictions because, you know, if you want to switch off by reading a book, you're not switching off if you're reading like a how to do these productive tasks in 30 minutes, you know what I mean? So it's it's nice that, you know, you can kind of take the time out and, and definitely switch off. Yeah, and I'm mm. with you as well. Like, I'm the same. I love reading business book, but recently I've just been like, why? I'm not enjoying it. Like, yeah. If it's, if I'm sat there reading, like, a theory about how to write better at 10 o'clock in the evening. I'm not going to go to bed then. I'm mm-hmm. usually thinking about sentence structure. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd rather just read, <laughs> yeah. like, a biography or something. <laughs> But yeah, no, yeah. I'm with you on that. It's about you've got to, like it's hard to separate it, especially when you do you know you care so much about your work, but it is hard to separate it down. So you just gotta put a bit of focus onto avenues. Mm-hmm. It's hard though. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard, especially when you've got to pick your put your phone away when you're reading. That's yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for coming in today. Um just before we finish up, I just wanna ask you about your favourite motivational quote or mantra that you can share with us today. Ooh. Hard one. Everyone, it's always a hard one for everyone. <laughs> oh, I don't know, you know. Uh, this is going to sound terrible, but I don't really buy into a lot of the motivation stuff. That's why I tried to stop it. Um, I guess Nike, Nike. So I'm just going to roll and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's great to do this again. Right. That marks the end of another great episode. We really hope you enjoyed tuning in today. And if you did, please share with your friends, rate us on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify and watch the video version on YouTube. We've got so many exciting things coming. So we really love for you to get involved. See you soon.